Hey YouTube, Jason here, starting this new channel, Conversating with Jason. This first conversation here was with my friend Austin from the band The Doomies. We put this together uh, as an effort to try to promote his show coming up on June 29th. If you support this channel, you know, and want to see some more conversations, just go ahead and give us a like. Give me a subscribe. I'm going to keep working on it. I'm going to try to put at least 10 of these suckers out and keep working on becoming a better interviewer, a better presenter, a uh, better editor. So uh, I'd really appreciate it. Any feedback, any action, you can give me with the like button, the subscribe button. Without any further ado, episode one. So how exactly are you initially planning on releasing this? Um, YouTube probably. YouTube, but like you have a you have a channel. How's it work? Yeah, but cool. it, there's not anything on there yet, really. So you just plan on making a series out of this? This will probably just be one. <laughs> Episode one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, New experience for me. Me too. I'm a little I'm a little nervous about it, you know. Oh, no, me too. I'm but like, I'm okay, a stupid. Paper <laughs> wine. Here you go, bro. All right. All right, thanks for having me in your wonderful home. I'm glad to see you. You're still here. I wasn't sure if you were still hanging around or not. Right on, yeah. I was out of town here since, like, October or something. I came back uh, when I went to um, Illinois for the holidays. That's yeah. where my, like, family was. Stayed with my cousin. And uh, then after the holidays, after New Year's, I went to Vegas. And I stayed there for just a few months. Um... I went, I would just started like playing cards again like I used to, like started going every day. You do that professionally? Um, somewhat, you know, like I would say professionally as in like... Like poker? Yeah, like I could make my living out of it, but my living was not very good. You know what I mean? Like, Well, I was, that's more than most people can say. Most people say, oh, I lost my house. Am I'm getting a divorce now. Yeah, most so people... That's like, that's like steps beyond that. This thing you can break even or make a okay living. That's like yeah, it's huge. you got to be pretty fucking good at it. I was uh, I started when I was young, and I decided pretty much that like I just wanted to play poker. Like damn, like my friend uh, Kyle who plays in this band called New Move. I don't okay. know if you've met him. He would he loves to play Texas Hold'em. So I wish I wants would to take it semi seriously because we have toker poker. I know you're doing your toker poker. I don't smoke weed, but I know Kyle would totally. Yeah, totally be down. When are you doing that again? Uh, two weeks, I think. Two weeks from today. I'll see if he be, he'll be down. Like, I'm not much of a card player, but he loves to play. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm more of a blackjack man. I'm not yeah. really good at I played Texas Hold'em once and beat his ass. <laughs> the Paul was just like, throw $5 in. But I only did it at that one time. And my game is draw, but nobody wants to fucking play draw anymore. Right. It's just... Well, we could play mixed games, but we mostly play Texas Hold'em. Nobody Hold wants to play draw. I'm not going to make people play draw. <laughs> okay, but have you ever heard of Badoogie? What is Badoogie? Okay, so it's the other game that I kind of want to introduce to Toker Poker because it's very easy to learn. It's kind of like weird, so it's like perfect it for Portland. Yeah, yeah, but it's still kind. Of, it's still considered poker, but you get dealt four cards. Uh huh. The object is to have the most suits and then if you ever if you tie in suits um so to have the most spades clubs diamonds <clears throat> so you get four cards you would want to have a spade a club a diamond and a heart you want to have all mismatched if you have two hearts then one negates the other if you have three clubs you can only play one club basically that sounds like a fun game and then same thing if you have two eights for instance then your eights negate each other, right? You can only play oh, one of really? them. Oh, really? Yeah. So it goes beyond suit into rank as well. Right. And so and so you get four cards, and then you get a draw, and then you get a draw again, and then you get a third draw to make this like final four-card hand. So, And then you have to bullshit each other and see who's got like the perfect Badoogie or whatever. Badu yeah, Badoogie would be like ace, two, three, four, all different suits. Well, that's like a, their royal flush, basically, right? Uh, yeah, but like it's, so it's, it's one, much two, three, easier four, to get, right? <laughs> right? I get it. Wow. Because of because uh, you know, 
a royal flush happens, whatever. Like, so why is it called Badoogie? That I do not know. Oh, by the way, I'll be playing a show. <laughs> right. Well, that's another topic of <laughs> the conversation is like how to promote these shows. You know, I've had a lot of ideas, but like you fail in the execution in that like uh, I can't get anybody usually on board with me. Yeah. Like to actually share in the energy. Well, in what way? I mean. Okay. So like I, my thing is about... Um, Try to realize my own limitations and what I'm actually going to put into something and then figure out an idea of how I can low maintenance C or whatever because that's about the energy I'm going to put in. <laughs> Move yeah. every piece of art in my house in here to make this... Tits. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, something to look at. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, okay, here's here's an idea. Click Interested Fest Northwest. Okay. No one on Facebook wants to click that they're going to anything. Yeah. But everybody will just click interested, especially if it's sort of in whatever, like, floats their boat or something like that. So you just make it as vague as possible and schedule it, like, a year out or nine mm -hmm. months out or something, right? And you just call it click interested fest Northwest and bill it out, like, Oh, special headliners to be announced if we get to a thousand interested. If 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 ten thousand click interested, you know, we're gonna have a state we're gonna have a second stage and this many whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um I don't know I can't lay it all out right now today on what needs to be done because that's not how I do things. I just start doing something and then see how it grows. And then um that's why that would be perfect because like if it was something that you could kind of like make it kind of funny or something to like go viral in a way or oh my god uh you share it on reddit look this thing this fake this fake event that doesn't even have concert goers has a thousand people wouldn't it be funny if you clicked interested too to get on that bandwagon and then you know that's how things work with people right they're like yeah. oh that is funny i'll click that too ha ha and then you could actually end up booking a festival. <laughs> exactly, because then you have you have your whole subscriber base or whatever. Like everybody's clicked in there. Yeah, ten thousand or whatever, however many you can grow it to, and oh, then yeah. you b book the show. Yeah, <laughs> based on who's in there, kind of. Yeah. Um. I don't know. That's just like one random idea. I would be into booking another tour, maybe, but touring is tough and like. A lot of people, a lot of people don't want to take the time off to do it. Like they want to live their real life first or whatever, you know. You mean work a job and die? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, well, shit. But I don't know. I mean, I have other ideas. Oh, uh, here's an idea. Real, real, like taboo, kind of, but not. You know, super, like, clean. Um, your flyer for your show is literally your Tinder profile. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> so instead of, like, promote, trying to get laid, you're just trying to, like, promote your events. No. You, you print onto a f physical paper flyer your Tinder profile, right? And whatever you put one kind of like tagline at the top and then you put you know show and date boom right because when people are walking down the street they're used to seeing that tinder profile a lot of people look at that so they have like a pre their eyes go to it put it that way so they'll look at it and then if like the little tagline there is is clever or something you might pull them in but also it's super ballsy right it's like uh, you're putting your Tinder profile like with your picture presented that way like it's that people like things that are like kind of edgy that way but yeah. it's not really because everybody has a Tinder profile so the fact that people are ashamed of theirs or like they put them on there for people to see it anyway so the fact that they like want to play shy after putting it out yeah 
Do you mean you see what I'm kind of going with? So there? you're saying have a Tinder profile account and then take a screenshot of that account and then make a flyer out of it? Yeah, and literally people are going to walk by a poll and see a Tinder fucking account that they're used to looking at that on their phone all day and their eyes just translate right over. Here's another good one. I saw Candace kind of did, did this the other day and I don't know that they did it intentionally. Um... She took a screenshot of Mara. Do you know uh, Candace? Is it the band that's got the girl in rose has the bangs? Yeah. Okay, yeah. They had a great promotion, and I don't even know if it was intentional. Uh, Mara texts Sarah something like, Oh, Ah God's playing at such and such a place at mm-hmm. 9. And she just screenshot her phone, um, which means it basically saves what you're looking at on your phone as a picture. Mm-hmm. So if you sent it to me, I would be able to see exactly what you're looking at on your phone because it's just a picture of it, right? So why it works is because so people what, are... What you, did she screenshot? People, okay. See how my messages come in like this? Yeah. Basically took a screenshot like this, but it would say John Howard saying the band is on at this time, right? Because then the flyer looks like your notification screen. Where you're used to looking for your information anyway. So all the information of the show was within the messages and the screenshot and whatnot? Yeah, the whole thing was basically just this This band's on at this place and this time. It was basically like a simple text message, but instead of to um, one specific person, anybody who reads that knows what it means. The whole connotation is built in. Yeah. You don't have to like go, well, what symbols should I use? Where do I get a cool artist? Where do I, how do I stand out? It's like, people just need to know. And the easiest way to get through to them is like the channels that they're already used to reading. They don't have to look at something and go, oh, how do I even read this? I don't, what is that? You know, yeah. it's like, the uh, it's a text message. They look at them all day long coming through anyway. Yeah. So you're just kind of like, kind of taking the same idea as... Um, You know on, uh, like, Instagram now, they, like, push the ads in just as you were looking at regular content? Somewhat. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm you, not computer savvy. Okay, but I do gotta, you use any social media? I, uh, yeah, Facebook and Instagram, but I'm not super savvy with it. Okay, but so you're, you get on Facebook and you're kind of scrolling through. Yeah. You ever see it pop up and it says at the corner you're watching a video and you're like, I don't follow that, and it says sponsored? Yeah. Okay, they feed it right in as if it's your normal content that your eyes and your mind is already saying, mm-hmm. I'm looking here, show me something that I want to see, kind of, right? And you kind of are just digging, scroll until you see something good, stop, maybe make a comment, yeah. whatever. But then they feed you a fucking ad, and your brain looks at it as if it's something that it's scanning for good information or something. It's not off to the side. It doesn't blink and say here's an interruption we want to sell you something they just feed it straight in Mm -hmm. normally so the marketing thing can work the same way you just kind of like give somebody something that they're already used to looking at all the time anyway whether it's the tinder profile the screen whatever make a screenshot that's your whole flyer it would be big we should try that sure (laughs) <laughs> I don't know about the Tinder thing, but um, something along those lines for sure. I mean, for this show, the 29th? Yeah. The screenshot thing is super easy, dude. That would take us like one second. It would probably be the best piece of uh, piece of promotion you how, ever did. How, about, how do you plan on putting it out there? Is this just Facebook or? Yeah, why not? Okay. Are you guys selling tickets to the show? Hmm... I don't know. I think it's just eight bucks at the door. No pre-sales. Do you want some more wine? I mean, we, we could, but I, I don't. I don't know. I'm in over my head. I think we're just doing eight bucks at the door. Is this the first one you booked? I've booked shows before, like Canton Club, but I've never booked the Tonic Lounge with both of these bands. I mean, they. It's been like a process. They. I. I try. I. I thought this is one one chance to get a bigger show for us this summer or bigger I say in huge quotation marks but you know both of these bands are fucking great I don't know 
collectively together they probably have really good draw and they're both different kind of genres or styles young hunter is more in the doom rock kind of desert rock thing but they're more original for a doom rock band a lot of these doom rock bands are really boring and young hunter is an amazing band okay but they do kind of come from that crowd but because they are a little bit more original than a lot of these fucking cookie cutter doom rock bands they can kind of play with different styles of music and the English language is kind of like if you took Ty Seagal and mixed it with like rockabilly and uh, rockabilly and oh, and the cramps maybe. Yeah, and, and they got a they got a set. I don't I haven't seen them in a while, but I saw them a bunch last so you've year. Seen or them something, before a couple times. Yeah. They got a set that creeps on you. You know, like when. When the oh, English yeah. language starts, you kind of it's are like... It's kind of doomy. And you're kind of like... like yeah, always the first in. two songs, I'm always yeah. like, eh, eh. And then, oh, like, no. it keeps going. I'm like, okay, actually, this is growing. This is getting pretty good. And then they keep it going. At the, by the end of it, I'm, like, wow. laughing with my friends, like, oh, man, this is going to be one of those bands we just kind of, like, caught two songs and then went to have a smoke or something, you know? Yeah. But, like, if you stick around, that one's good. English language. Yeah, I don't know. I, I they grabbed me pretty right off the bat. I like the the way that Kyle plays guitar is pretty interesting. He does a lot of scra- uh, 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 tr- pig scratching, but with a kind of harmonic way, right? Where it's part of almost like the melody and his soloing, and uh, fucking Patrick's an insane bass player. It's Patrick, right? Hey, Patrick White. Yeah, oh, he's a. He, I don't know. He's a uh, fucking crazy. I always like watch him play bass. It's sick, and their drummer's rad too. So, and I have a I have a thing for three pieces, anyways. Right. On. Obviously, are you guys still a three piece? We are. We might add. Um, we might add keyboard. My roommate's been interested in. It and- Right. Yeah. And it's got a well tonic lounge, good sound. Mm-hmm. That's the one. Th- I don't go over there very often, Ooh. but every time that I do, I'm like. Well, that- with the whole no debacle, you know, people might start. Oh heading down right. There. Yeah, I don't know anything really about that. Oh. I just heard that they're in some trouble. Uh, I don't know what happened. I think the something with tax evasion and showing people's WTs or something. I don't know, like. Yeah, I heard something similar. There was a tax issue with the uh, with the uh, maybe not tax issue, ta- tax evasion, but tax issue. There was like rumors that he was pocketing people's W twos, not reporting it, and so in response, and this is all like rumors, game of telephone. Say. Yeah, this is just what I understand about it. This is this is our segment called unsubstantiated bar uh, talk. <laughs> unsubstantiated. None of this is factual. This is just what I've heard through the telephone game of Portland, Oregon. But that uh, in response to these accusations, he posted people's W-2s to prove himself innocent. On the internet. On the internet. Oh! <laughs> Which he may have been innocent, no. or may not have been. But, but now. he fucked up by doing that. And then he quickly took it down, and then everybody quit in mass that worked there. And everybody that worked there kind of made, for the, over the years, kind of made the place what it is. So, I guess... Are they open? I don't even... I think they are. Okay. But I don't think it's... There's but like there's a little like, stick is it gonna be good for you to play there as a band, you know, for your name and everything. The Whatever. thing that sucks is I love that place. I wouldn't and I worry loved too it. much about. Stuff I loved like it that. Mo- that it moved to what I was told was I never got to see the Blackbird when it was up. And when I first moved to Portland in 2008, it was Tony Starlights, which was like this jazz club, mm-hmm. and I was it told it was originally like this like very famous punk rock bar called the Blackbird. So it makes total sense that they would move there. And with that heritage of inheriting that, they even had this like big like blackbird, this weird kind of. Have you been in there? Uh huh. It's rad. They have like this big like blackbird. Um, it's like a a bird s- sculpture statue thing in the corner by the bathrooms. It's really kind of where is this looking. place? It's on Sandy and in Hollywood. Okay. Um, right by where and it's you still go called the, the blackbird. Freedom. No, it's called it's 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 so the Blackbird was back in like the late nineties, early two thousands, and then it closed. And then when I moved to Portland around two thousand eight, it was a jazz club called Tony Starlights, and then it was gotcha, closed gotcha. for many years. And one of the no had to move 
and they swiped it up. Perfect place for them. Oh, it's the no. So yes, yeah, the no now. Oh, right. So on. okay. <laughs> they had this homage to the Blackbird, where it's like they have this huge bird in the corner, and they have this crazy like mirror on the wall with all these Portland famous people kind of like worked in. They have Fred and Tootie Cole over in the corner. The vibe's really cool. It feels like an old school Portland bar, even though you know it's a newer bar. It's got that heritage behind it, so I was really digging the new spot and centrally located. It's yeah, I didn't know perfect. That but then all the shenanigans happened, and now no one's playing there. Uh, so it's just it's kind of heartbreaking, really, for me. Like I was like, finally, a fucking rock and roll bar near my house, and maybe it feels like old Portland is completely dead. But now because of a technicality. <sighs> No one's gonna play there. Well, blah, you know, blah blah. The world is very forgiving. I would. Um, I don't know. I would not turn down a good show, and I but would I don't, also. I don't know. <laughs> you don't know if the world's forgiving. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the world's forgiving at all anymore. <laughs> no, it is. It will always prove to be. Don't you know the yin and the yang? Yeah. Good, white always chases black. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So this has been the interview process. <laughs> I I don't know. I'll look back and I'll be like, oh, fuck it, I'm too nervous to post that shit. No, yeah. I probably won't. I'm going to try, man. Like, okay. So I've been uh, volunteering. I just, like, I just don't want to get off like I'm like, okay, so you're being recorded now. Don't get off on one of your psychotic tirades. <laughs> I was just like, oh, I got a better hold back. Or, you know. Hey, there's some there's some barrels at the bottom Here, of Rocky so, View. Here's some, yeah, here's some issues I have with my family as a kid. I was, <laughs> <laughs> well, the wine's speaking, it isn't me. Hey, Jason, I drank a box of wine. I want to tell you something. Uh, I've never said this to anyone before. There is $300,000 buried under the big T. On the corner of Sandy and 80th. <laughs> Alright, good thing we're not live streaming. I'll have a chance to go look that up before I post this online. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I was going to just keep talking about shit. Like, I don't know. Let's talk about how dope that chest set is. <laughs> Fucking got that at a garage sale for $3. You got this at a gr- for $3. Yeah. This ain't no $3 chest set. I know. I think actually Nora bought it for me. Just brought it I home. I think you guys like, ripped somebody off. <laughs> no, she's like, I, she's like I, I hope you're not mad. I've spent $3 on this. Oh, there's no way yeah, that you would be red, mad. Right? Oh, this is beautiful. I've been trying to learn how to play chess, but I'm so bad. Oh, I'd whoop your ass in two seconds. Yeah, four moves. You'd probably have me. Yeah, I know the four line. move. Do you know the four move? <laughs> no. I always use it on new players just to fuck with them. I play a it's lot on easy, my phone, yeah. but I don't get better. It's a hard game, man. Sometimes. God, this is such a beautiful set. Yeah. Is it made in India or something? Like these. Hey, are... man, sometimes when we have toker poker, people want to just play chess too. That's more my jam. I'm not as good at chess as I used to be. The Black Knight. <laughs> Supercharged Knight. <laughs> or there's the, the Doom and Light. It's like. <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> I've been volunteering over at, um. Portland Psychedelic Society. Oh, what's that? So they just... Microdose like a motherfucker? What's up? So somebody invited me to one, and it was microdosing with ayahuasca. So I was like, oh. So so I haven't delved super deep into psychedelics. I came from a very Jehovah's Witness upbringing. Oh, man. I used to smoke a bit of weed back in the day in the early 2000s. Yeah. But then as I entered my early to mid-20s, I discovered that it made me very paranoid and dehydrated. Weed. It made me think about death all the time. So I don't really like weed. But I have had some positive experiences with LSD, although I haven't really completely, like, ripped the head off of the dragon and taken, like, a large dose. I've always, like, microdose on, like, either a really weak tab that's, like, got from somebody or, like, half a tab kind of thing. But I've always felt 
like it was like the best ADD medication. And like I always feel like I wouldn't want to go beyond this. Right. Is that microdosing? Probably. Like, like what would microdosing on ayahuasca be? Would it be similar to that or is it a little more intense? Because I'm scared to open the door. <laughs> you never open the door. All the way. No. Wow, man. I did recently. I never tripped balls. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> and I don't think I want to, honestly. Uh, so, I I'll like to your question control. about microdosing. Which I don't is, know. I've never done it, microdosing. I've only taken the big doses. But they say the microdose, like, if you just took a little bit of mushrooms, like, just hardly enough to do anything, you know? Like, I don't know what that dose would be, just like a little nibble or something. Yeah. You could actually go take an eye test and have, like, perfect vision. Even if you had, like, astigmatism or something, they say, like, your eyes will measure, like... That's so, down. Or so, like, they say that if you just take little nibbles, then um, you kind of, like, you know, your, your mind works better. Like, you can learn a little faster, you are a little more open, you don't close down as fast or something. I think but, that's, that's like that's like medicine. But if you take the large dose, if you take the red pill. If you take the large, yeah, exactly. If you take the large dose, yeah. you face all of the issues that are causing those things, and you realize what the answer is in that moment because there's only one answer, and you have no choice but to accept it. And then you wake up completely knowing what all your bullshit was and what you have to do now. Or you're in a parking lot at Kmart staring at the sun. If you're weak, <laughs> uh, of a weak constitution. Uh, you know what I mean? Is there still Kmarts anymore? <laughs> These references are dated. <laughs> ventures? You ever have a go to a Ventures? Uh, what's a Ventures? It was like... Do tell. Is this an Illinoisan? In, in Iowa, we had a place called Iowa. Venture. That when they went out of business, the Kmart took over the venture. Basically, it's, it was the same thing. Adventure. Just like a general merchandise. Would you like some some adventure? <laughs> These kids I knew used to go in there and steal baseball cards, but I was like, no, that's wrong. Oh man, do you remember that was a thing? Baseball is that still? Do people still collect baseball cards? It's all going to the blockchain. What's a blockchain? Bitcoin. You know that? Yeah, I'm aware of Bitcoin. Okay, so each one is like individual. It can be like passed, and it's like, it's basically conceptually like a perfect uh, ledger. Okay. Everyone always knows where marble number one is. Everybody always knows where marble number two is, etc. You know, like you could. So they're digitizing baseball cards. Yeah, and so each. You can name, a, you know, on the blockchain, you've put your baseball card, and that's the one. There, it, You've got it. If somebody else wants it, they have to somehow, you know, haggle with you or buy it off you off eBay or whatever exchange that's used. I don't know where the, these sales go down, but they're even doing it now with what they call crypto kitties. Have you heard of that? I'd just rather have a regular kitty. <laughs> so do you remember Tamagotchi? Oh, fuck yeah. I'm Pets. a 90s kid. I okay. had one. So My now, mom would not give me a Tamagotchi because she always watched these fear-mongering talk show like Just, Sally Jesse Raphael and shit like that. And I don't even know if she was a thing by this point in the later 90s when Tamagotchi came out. But she would not buy me one because she heard fear reports targeted towards parents that kids were committing suicide when their Tamagotchi died. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yes. Wow. I don't know how true this report is because you know sensationalism and journalism, how it is skewed now. Right. Maybe it was just like Some one instance. Some kid just died. And Might then... have been just one instance of it, but then it was like, this is an epidemic that could affect your kid. Yeah. So she wouldn't fucking get me. <laughs> she me was so one. worried about you. And then finally she let me have a Tamagotchi to have for a bit, and these jocks... I'm pretty sure threw threw it away or something. I hated PE. <laughs> this was 1997. Gym class? What? How old were? You? How? What grade were you in 1997? Oh, I was in sixth grade. I was in eighth grade, or I think ninth I was or in, tenth grade. I was in eighth grade in 1999. Wow, I got some years on you. Wait, how many? I was in twelfth grade in 2000. 
What year were you born? 82. Yeah, I was 85. Yep, young man. Oh, I'm so young. Oh, we could talk about 90s things and we'll know what the other is talking about. Isn't that a fun game people oh, play now? Let's play this game, if you don't mind. Um, do you feel that consider yourself a millennial? Me? Yes. No. But I'm, I don't know. I don't think I am. Would you consider me a millennial? No. But technically, people tell me all the time, get over it, you're a millennial. <laughs> and I hear this all the time, and I'm like, but I feel... I... So people that are, like, in the sweet spot of definitely being a millennial. Yeah. Like, my drummer, sweet guy. But sometimes there's certain things that we don't, when we're talking, that references don't come across. You know, I reference, like, some 90s shit. And I'm not trying to, like, sound holier than that. Like, I was a 90s kid. I'm just like, but sometimes there's, you know, we can't, we can talk to certain things and understand where we're at and relate. Were you a 90s kid? Yes, I had pogs and shit. Right. I had a bad boy slammer. Fucking damn! Take all your pogs. Yes, I. uh, Yes, I could hum the theme song. (laughs) Fucking Angelica. Is that your crush? No. No. (laughs) You didn't like her. Oh, I didn't hate her. (laughs) Where'd you grow up? In Eugene. I grew up in Springfield and Eugene. Springfield, Missouri? Oregon. Oregon. Gotcha. Home of the Simpsons. The only real Springfield. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Groening's The Simpsons was based... Well, the rumor is is that we're the Springfield and the Simpsons, and we try to take p- pride in that. We but were, don't you think every Springfield... On the they all every try. State say but that he's from Oregon, so they can all go fuck themselves. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of if you if you get nerdy and conspiratorial about the show, there's a lot of weird references. What are some that you can think of? Oh, immediately, yeah. Uh, there's a scene in The Simpsons where it's raining, and Bart's like, "What am I going to call this place? Eugene, Oregon." He just says it for no <laughs> reason. It's just there, and it's like, what the fuck? There's also like the um, the beef between who is it like Whoville or Hooverville or whatever? Yeah, Shelbyville. And Shelbyville and the and Springfield. It's very similar to the beef between Springfield and Eugene. And there's even an episode where they get into this fight over who's going to get an opera house. Uh huh. And the Springfield ends up getting the opera house, but it's weird because Eugene has an opera house, and the opera house in this episode looks exactly like the Holt Center in Eugene in this episode. Okay. Like exactly like it. Right. Also, Homer works at a nuclear plant, right? And there was Trojan in Oregon, but that wasn't in, in down. That was up uh, past near um, Kelso uh-huh. on, on the Oregon in side. Washington. Yeah, on the Oregon side. Oh, okay. Of I the, see. Because 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 uh, Oregon kind of like cuts up north. Yeah, has a little extra territory. It's not. But if you strange. look at the pictures of the power plant. Very similar to the Trojan one, except for, give you, mind you, that uh, Trojan had only one nuclear reactor and one containment building, and the um, one Simpsons has two. But, I don't know. It's just shit. Like, it might be all bullshit, stoner bullshit, but, uh, yeah. It's at least based on a generalization of all of Oregon. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I don't know, because, well, Springfield, Illinois, it's a pretty big one, yeah. and there's always something about, um, I remember, just, the one that I can remember is that the radio station call letters are like KWBB, I can't remember what it is, it's like, KWBB is going to give you something stupid, whatever their like call yeah. letters are, right? Yeah. Well, if the call letters start with K, then it's on one side of the Mississippi. And if they start with W, then then it's on the other side of the Mississippi. Right on. So there was some theory about that, and I'm trying to think back and remember now. Does that rule out the West? I can't I can't even remember what the damn call letters are, so <laughs> No theory here. Just stating like I remember going back uh and reading like these uh con- what state is the Simpsons in back on the old internet when you Yahoo search oh, things yeah. or whatever, you know? What happened to Yahoo? <laughs> what happened they to that? They sold to like some, some 
I mean, it's still Singapore thing, country right? or something. Yeah, was, I can still go www.yahoo. Fuck, I don't yeah, wanna, but it's I'm not gonna a, be an all indie rocker about my search engine today. Fuck Google. Yahoo's still there, right? Well, yeah, Yahoo.com is there, but the company like got they got consumed by some like Asian conglomerate or something. This is what I understand about the internet and uh, why the way millennials perceive shit and the social media. Not even millennials, but everybody. Like, everyone's like, oh my god, Facebook. But how is it any different from MySpace? It's almost the exact same fucking thing. They make a movie about the creator of Facebook. They didn't make a movie about the god Tom. They should make a Tom movie. That would be epic. We should make the Tom movie. Make the Tom movie with fucking... Who is Tom? But this is our promo. could play promo. Tom. No, here's the promo. My One Facebook man. took over as what? Where is Tom now? And then we do a slow shot of like <laughs> you walking into the thing, <laughs> and you're Tom. Like we'll just do like a ten second like fucking trailer. You're Tom, and then we'll just be like, "Psych, do me that." Sure. Okay. Hold on. Let me make sure this is still recording. <laughs> it's just been... Yeah, it still is. Isn't that something? Am I still in the shot? Even. Good question. We yeah. back. You've been out of it a little bit. I've probably been entirely out of the shot. 